Some of my viewers asked me how they can replace their lead acid batteries with lithium batteries. In this video I will show you how and why the drop in replacement lithium battery is a lie. When you replace a lead acid battery there are some components you need to keep in mind or change. These are the charge controller, the battery charger, the battery to battery charger, the main battery fuse, how to monitor battery state of charge, and some temperature considerations. Let's discuss each of these in more detail. Charge controllers come with various charging settings, suited for different types of batteries, like flooded lead acid, gel, AGM and lithium. It's possible that your charge controller doesn't support lithium batteries, which is why upgrading to a model with a lithium profile is essential. For those of you with a programmable charge controller, Here's how you will adjust it for lithium batteries. Set the charging voltage to 14.6 volts, the float voltage to 13.5 volts, and the equalization charge to 14.6 volts. If your system uses a 24 volt battery, you will need to double these numbers. For a 48 volt system, multiply by 4. Just like your charge controller, your battery charger needs to be compatible with lithium batteries. If it doesn't allow you to switch the charging profile to the settings, it's time to upgrade to a charger designed for lithium. Lithium has a high short circuit current, meaning the current will be very high if a short happens at the battery. This is because lithium has a low internal resistance. To safeguard our system, it's crucial to adapt by using fuses capable of handling these higher short circuit currents. Here's how we approach it. We estimate the potential short circuit current by multiplying the battery amp hour capacity by 10. For instance, a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery could experience a short circuit current of up to 1000 amps. This table shows the available fuses with their short circuit current rating and the voltage. The voltage levels add to the consideration. Higher voltages brings greater risk as the arc might jump across fuse contacts. Specialized fuses such as class T or NH types are necessary for large capacity setups. Like a 24 volt or 48 volt lithium battery. They are designed to quickly extinguish any arc within the fuse, preventing it from creating a bridge across contacts an essential safety upgrade. A 24 volt 400 amp hour battery could see a short circuit current as high as 4000 amps. In such cases where a mega fuse might previously have been used, an upgrade to an MRBF, ANL, class T or NH fuse is required. Given that a mega fuse's short circuit current only reaches up to 2000 amps at 32 volts. If you have a 48 volt 100 amp hour server rack, you need an MRBF, class T or NH fuse because the short circuit can be 1000 amps at 58 volts. For more in-depth insights into choosing the right fuse for your system, consider watching my detailed video on selecting fuses. While a simple voltage readout might be enough for lead acid batteries, the story changes when we switch to lithium due to its flat discharge curve. This makes it harder to gauge the battery state of charge just by looking at the voltage. That's where a shunt comes into play. A shunt is a precise battery monitor, tracking both the power flowing into and out of the battery, along with its voltage. This device should be connected to the battery's negative post, and then all your appliances and systems should be hooked up after this point. This diagram shows exactly how the setup works. You will also notice a small red wire leading to the positive of the battery. Its role is crucial. It measures the battery voltage to calculate watt hours, multiplying the battery's capacity by its voltage continuously. For accuracy, this wire needs to be positioned as close to the positive battery terminal as possible. Modern shunts are equipped with a display or can connect to a Bluetooth app. 
allowing you to monitor the current state of charge of your battery easily. Before moving on, do you like the video so far? Consider giving it a like to support the channel, so I can keep making videos like this. Lead acid batteries have some resilience to freezing temperatures, varying by their specific chemistry. However, lithium batteries, while able to discharge in cold conditions, should not be charged when it's below freezing. This is a moment to consider investing in a lithium battery that can heat themselves or have low temperature protection. If you live in an area with harsh winters, consider placing these batteries in a warmer place rather than a shed to keep them warmer. Ideally, lithium batteries should be kept at around 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius for optimal performance. And a quick note on placement. Never place a battery, whether lead acid or lithium, directly on a concrete floor. Always use an insulating barrier like a wooden board beneath them. If you've been charging a lead acid battery in your van or boat directly from the alternator, you likely used a battery isolator designed for lead acid batteries. Lithium batteries, however, have much lower internal resistance, which can lead to dangerously high currents. To manage this and ensure safe charging, a battery to battery or B to B charger is necessary, as it's specifically designed to regulate the current flow. For a deeper dive into how this works and why it's important, take a look at my video on alternator charging. Let me know your questions in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this and watch these videos next.